Hi guys, TC Lee here on behalf of the Tank Club. I'm here today to tell you everything you need to know about Alkosh. Now, Alkosh is a medium gear set that is obtained in the Moor of Lorcash trial. This set is considered by some as a damage dealer set due to the set piece bonuses that are stamina and damage dealer related. The original int intention of the developers was for Alkosh to be used by damage dealers and it has never seen any significant changes or nerfs for many years up until the Stonethorn patch where they've attempted to adjust the set to make it into a more damage dealer friendly set. This is not the case, however, it's just become a stronger tank set. Even though the set suits a damage dealer in terms of the set piece bonuses, it's actually a very powerful tank set and there's a number of reasons why this is a tank set. It does require some practice to really master it, uh, but once you kind of get the hang of how to use Alkosh and what you need to do, it becomes an extremely useful part of all group content. So why is Alkosh a tank set? So the first thing is, as the main tank, you are in almost every single situation in the game in melee distance of all bosses and enemies. So as a tank, you're the first person, you're the front line of combat. You are the only person in a group who is consistently, perfectly positioned for activating synergies and triggering Alkosh and the armor shred on enemies. Damage dealers are not always positioned near to bosses. Sometimes they have to move for mechanics and other things. So this is why, this is reason number one. Reason number two, you cannot gain stamina resources while blocking with a shield. One of your main ways of sustaining is by using synergies. And you rely on synergies to sustain fights, especially long fights in some of the lower tier groups with lower DPS. Even synergies that are not orbs or shards will give you resources via the Undaunted Command passive, which all tanks should be utilising for sustain. And this is why, again, it's great that Alkush is used on the tanks because the tanks should be using all of these synergies that both proc Alkosh and give you great sustain. Reason number three why Alkosh is a tank set, damage dealers are always trying to set up to optimise the maximum amount of damage that they can do. To do this, they need gear, and they need gear sets that give them damage-based stats and buffs. Now, the Alkosh 5 piece is basically a group utility rather than a damage buff. As a damage dealer, you'd be far better off using a set where the 5 piece bonus is giving you an individual stat or buff, such as weapon damage or something along those lines, or critical. If you use Alkosh as a damage dealer, your 5 piece set bonus is the Alkosh armor shred. Whereas if you've got a tank using Alkosh, a damage dealer will still get the Alkosh five piece bonus, plus they'll get the five piece bonus of another set, meaning you'll do a lot more damage. So if you're a damage dealer using Alkosh, you're losing out on a potential five piece set bonus, which you could be getting to increase your damage a lot more. Alkosh is supporting the group by reducing physical and spell resistance. While it's possible to do a reasonable amount of damage using Alkosh, there are a lot more superior sets that will help increase your damage a lot more. And the more damage that the damage dealers do, um, the better the case, the better the situation. Um, in every fight, the main priority is to kill enemies as quickly as physically possible to remove the threat. And by doing that, you need the damage dealers to be optimizing the damage and sets such as Alkosh put on the support roles because it is a it's a support set not a damage set reason number four why alkush is a tank set so damage dealers have a lot to do with regards to damage rotations playing mechanics movement and sustain as a tank you have a lot more availability um, in your time for maintaining and focusing on alkush obviously that you've got a lot to do as a tank as well especially when you're a new tank to play mechanics sustain but you're far better positioned to carefully time synergies and contribute towards your group by using Alkosh rather than just once you get to a certain point with tanking and you know how to do a fight, you are kind of just standing around, taunting and blocking. So that's when you start to bring in Alkosh because it gives you actually something to do. Once you know mechanics of a fight, you shouldn't just be standing there taunting and blocking. That is not your role as a tank. So you need to start bringing in Alkosh. You need to start timing your synergies. You need to start bringing in Crusher, timing your Crusher. Those things are things that you need to do because you do have a lot of time once you know how to do a fight. What Alkosh pieces should you use? So ideally, 
you should really consider collecting Alkosh for every gear slot. Initially, you do want to have the jewellery, the weapons, the shields, the one-handed weapons, the ice staff, maybe even a lightning staff, possibly a bow as well if you really want it. Um, but you don't really want to focus on the body pieces. The body pieces are medium armour. Tanking in medium armour is very difficult, especially for beginner tanks. If you're more advanced at tanking, you might consider doing medium armour tanking as an off-tank or a hybrid tank, but not really as the main tank. If you struggle to find Alkosh weapons, then you could just use jewellery with a belt and hands of Alkosh, and then make sure you use a two-piece monster set that is heavy to get you five-piece heavy armour bonuses. It is also a good idea to collect the body pieces for the future because you can use Alkosh as a hybrid tank, as an off tank, using um, them on the medium on the body so that you can increase your DPS slightly. Um, it's also possible to tank some of the easier content in medium armor, such as Vet, Ethereum Archive, um, Normal Trials, Normal Dungeons, some of the base game veteran dungeons as well. So you can tank in medium armor if needed for pushing more damage, but it's not really advised for most players. Golding out this set is pretty important because the armor shred value will be less if you're not using it at gold upgrade level. Uh, gold jewelry can be obtained from veteran more of low cash or by upgrading at the jewelry station and also from the weekly rewards from completing veteran more of low cash. The jewelry um, it can be dropped in purple in chests also and obviously the weapons, the shields all drop on the last boss or in the chest throughout the trial. Body pieces can drop from any boss or the chests as well. So how to use Alkosh. So the Alkosh debuff on an enemy is applied by activating a synergy in the direction that the enemy is stood. So you've got to be looking towards that direction. The debuff is an armor shred that reduces physical and spell resistance of the enemy. And it's based on whatever the initial hit of Alkosh does to the enemy. So for example, when you use a synergy, Whatever your Alkosh hits for with the initial synergy press, so let's say it's 4,000 damage, then your armor shred will be 4,000 physical and spell resistance that you remove from the target. Alkosh is an area of effect set, and all enemies in front of you will get the debuff within about a 12 meter range. Alkosh is a very group reliant set. For you to get a good Alkosh uptime, you rely on your group to provide synergies to maintain the debuff, but also the other members of your group not to take the synergies and they should know which synergies they can and cannot take. There is a number of trackers and add-ons to show your Alkosh timer on the enemy. There is also the in-game debuff tracker which also shows that. The way to keep Alkosh on the target is by using a synergy and then you need to kind of mentally count eight to nine seconds in your head or you can watch one of the trackers before you then use another synergy. Once you are eight to nine seconds since the last synergy and one second before Alkosh expires, you should use another synergy. Alkosh will re refresh and overlap uh, when using a synergy. It's important to note that you can only use one of each type of synergy every 20 seconds. There is a synergy cooldown. To maintain 100% Alkosh uptime, you would need to overlap the synergies by one second. So you would need at least three synergies to get 100% Alkosh uptime on the armor shred. You would be able to get a very good uptime with just two synergies, but you would have some small downtime and you wouldn't be applying the maximum potential on the Alkosh armor, sh armor shred if you allow it to run out for one second. So you do need three synergies. Two synergies will get you close to 100%, but it won't quite be at 100%. And it would mean that your Alkosh Shred is doing less than it's supposed to. To get the maximum potential from the Armor Shred, you need to use two synergies at the start of a fight, and then overlap each synergy with at least one second remaining on your Alkosh to ensure that the max Alkosh debuff is constantly applied. So what synergies can you use so you will need to set up your group quite effectively and efficiently if you want a good Alkosh uptime. As mentioned already, you can use one type of each synergy every 20 seconds. So you need a variety of synergies available. The first thing you can do is members of your group should only use group based synergies and not steal any other synergies that are needed for Alkosh. So group synergies include combustion from orbs, 
blood funnel from altar and purify from ritual. Alkosh only synergy should be the conduit that's provided by Sorcerer's Liquid Lightning. Grave Robber, which is provided by a Necromancer's Unnerving Boneyard. And Harvest, which is from a Warden's Healing Seed. To maintain Alkosh, you essentially need to use Combustion. They're provided by all Magic Adidis, or they should be provided by all Mag Magic Adidis from Mystic Orbs as part of their rotation and from healers as well. Conduit from a Sorcerer and Grave Robber from a Necromancer. You've got to time these synergies and not just press them when you see them. This is a perfect scenario, but it won't always work. The Warden synergy is not always a, f a great option for consistency because it will often be cast onto the group rather than onto a boss or onto the tank and the synergy won't appear for the tank. Plus it will often be accidentally used since there is now a synergy priority system and the harvest appears at the top of the list due to it being a healing synergy. You also have some situational synergies and these are synergies that you won't see all the time and they are not completely reliable to maintain your Alkosh. So you should use these when you see them. So as soon as you see these synergies, it's a good idea to use them um, as they're not consistently going to always be there. These synergies include the Purify from the Templar's Extended Ritual, Blood Funnel from Blood Altar, when your health drops low, Shackle from a Dragon Knight's Dragon Knight Standard, uh, things such as Bone Wall from Bone Shield, Radiate from Inner Fire, and Pure Agony from a Necromancer's Agony Totem. There are two other options for synergies if you struggle to maintain your Alkosh. You can now get the Lady Thorn monster set by completing Veteran Castle Thorn. The monster set from this dungeon is a fantastic monster set. It causes major main reducing enemy damage by 30% as an area of effect for 5 seconds. To cause that, you need to use a health cost and ability such as Balance of Blood Altar, which makes you summon a kind of blood orb. Like there's a floating blood orb, which also creates a synergy that you can use yourself. So it's a self synergy. And it's the only type of, it's the only gear set in the game to create a self synergy. It's the only thing aside from a necromancer that can provide a self synergy as well. So that's really, really helpful. And when you use the, the kind of blood orb synergy, um, it will proc your Alkosh as well as cause the major maim every 30 seconds. And you can use this blood orb synergy every 20 seconds and you can create one every 10 seconds. You could also try using a necromancer tank. Now, some groups might not be okay with this option. Necromancer tanks are a very good option for tanking. If you're in a group with no necros, anywhere up to two necros, depending on what trial you're doing. If you've got less than three necros, basically, you could use a necro tank. And you'll be using that mainly because of the Colossus Ultimate that you're going to bring to the group is the main reason. But also, the reason a Necromancer is good for Alkosh is because they have a skill called Avid Boneyard, which creates a synergy that you could use yourself. Basically, if you were a Necromancer tank, using Avid Boneyard and the Lady Thorns monster set, you would only need one more synergy to maintain 100% Alkosh uptime, which would be extremely easy. So, you've got the Lady Thorn monster set, you can place Avid Boneyard whenever you need it to get a self synergy, and then you would just need, for example, an Orb synergy, so the Combustion synergy, and you would be able to get 100% Alkosh uptime with those three synergies very very easily plus you're bringing some group utility by being a necro and the colossus ultimate if you don't have three necros already in your group if you don't have any necros at all then this is obviously going to be a fantastic option for any group that you're in so setting up a tank to use alkosh the alkosh armor shred that you do when using a synergy is based upon whatever the initial hit of alkosh is when it hits the target so setting up for alkosh means that you are trying to help your group reach the penetration cap which is 18,200. So in PvE content, bosses don't have any more than 18,200 spell and physical resistance. So you need to strip that with the armor shred to hit the max. So your group can hit the maximum amount of damage that they're capable of. You're not trying to maximize the armor shred to the absolutely highest value that you can get. There is absolutely no point in doing that. There's no point in trying to hit Alkosh up to a 10k armor shred for no reason there's a lot more risk involved the higher the armor shred you're trying to reach you were just trying to get it to the point where it reaches the cap of penetration on whatever content that you are doing so for example if you're in a magicka group um, for a magicka group to get to their pen cap 
uh, you would need major breach from pierced armor, unnerving boneyard, or elemental drain. That does 5,280 pen. Then you've got minor breach from power of the light from the templar, which does 1,320 pen. A gold infused staff with a gold crusher enchant would do 2,108 pen. And then Magic Adidis have the Light Armor Passive, which gives them 4884 pen as well. If they then don't put any points into Spell Erosion Champion points, that gives them a total pen of 13,592. So with your Alkosh, you need to hit 4,608. So this is quite easy to do. You either use any one-handed weapon and you need to set up your CP in a certain way. So if you're wanting to keep your Blessed and Elfborn CP, that's fine. That is more than acceptable. So you can go with any weapon, any one-handed weapon, 64 bless, 31 elf born, 52 in master at arms to reach that jump point, 59 pissing, and 64 mighty. And that will get you to the 4,608 plus damage that you need from your initial Arkosh hit. If you use a sharpened weapon, you can use a few more points into elf born. You can take points out of master at arms. So you can go 64 blessed, 40 elf born, 44 master at arms, 56 piercing and 64 mighty this gives you um, a little bit more leniency with your cp both of these subs hit the correct value that they need to hit on alkosh to give your magic adidis a hit with like where they hit the pen cap for your alkosh to hit that amount you need to have major and minor fracture applied you need infused crusher and minor vulnerability you then need to use your alkosh and then use your alkosh again to get the most maximum alkosh value that you can and then you need to maintain your Alkosh every 9 seconds to maintain that buff. If you are in a stamina group, things are a little bit different. So, stamina group's pen is Major Fracture, which comes from Pierced Armor, Ransack and Nerve in Boneyard. That's 5280. You've got Minor Fracture from Power of the Light from the Templar skill again. That's 1220. We've then got an Infused... Uh, staff with a Crusher Enchant, but we're using the Torugs gear set. You're going to have to bring in Torugs in a stamina group. That will give you 3056. You then got the Tremor Scale Monster set from Volumfell. That's going to bring 2395 if it's a gold quality. You've got the Sorcerer skill uh, that will have to be used by a stamina DD or a Sorcerer Tank Crystal Weapon. That's going to give a thousand pen, which leaves Alkosh. Um, with the current amount that I was able to hit, that's 5,041 that I was able to hit with Alkosh. That means Stamina DDs need to use one point into piercing and no sharpened weapons. Stamina DDs don't get anything similar to the Light Armor Passive, so they have to gain the extra 4884 physical pen um, to compete with the Magic damage, de damage Dealers, and they get this from Turgs and Tremor Scale and the Sorcerer Skill crystal weapon. With all that applied, you were left with 5,194 Alkosh hit required to hit the pen cap. For the tank using Alkosh, you would need to use a sharpened weapon, 100 points into Master Arms, 70 points into Piercing, and 100 into Mighty. And with Turug's Tremor Scale, Major and Minor Fracture, Crystal Weapon, Minor Vulnerability, and Alkosh, the second Alkosh hit will give you a hit of 5,041. This means uh, Stamina DDs are 108 pen short of the pen cap, so they need to use one CP into piercing. They do not need sharpened weapons if you're using this cell for Alkosh. So that is everything that you need to know about Alkosh. Um, Alkosh is now a better tank set than it has ever been. It's a very, very important set for all group content. It's quite easy to set up with the fact that you only need to really switch your blue champion points to maximise the value. And you've just got to remember that you are not trying to hit the absolute top number that you can with Alkosh. You're just, you're just trying to hit the number that's going to allow you to reach the pen cap for Magicka or Stamina, depending on what sort of group you're in. If you did want to try and hit even higher, if you're in a super, super organized group, you could use things like the Malakath Band of Brutality. And that would mean that you don't have to use things such as Minor Breach and Fracture anymore. You could re essentially remove some of the other skills that are used in groups by increasing your Alkosh, but for a standard group, you would just use the Penetration debuff still that most groups were using anyway. The higher the value that you are applying into your Alkosh first hit, the bigger the risk. So if you've got Alkosh hitting 10,000 with the first hit and you're getting 10,000 Armor Shred, that might sound great, but if you've got any downtime whatsoever and your DDs have planned for you to be hitting 10k, they don't have sharpened weapons or CP into pen, 
you've not used certain skills such as minor breach and then you have any downtime at all with your Alkosh at that point, it just means that your damage for your group is going to be extremely low and they're going to lose so much DPS by you not maintaining that high Alkosh. So to mitigate the potential problems with Alkosh, we're just trying to hit the pen cap um, and we're just trying to get to it while using all of the available skills that are available to everybody to hit the pen cap as well. So we're just trying to cover the difference between the pen cap by using the skills and whatever's left over at the end. So thank you all for watching. If you've got any questions about Alkosh or you want to see a written version of this, then please check out my Discord, The Tank Club. The link for that will be in the description below. Thank you all for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye for now.